live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone to our nation's capital. We are theCUBE, we are live at AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We're joined by Ken Eisner, Director of Worldwide Educational Programs at AWS. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So tell our viewers a little bit about what, what you do as, as the Director of Educational Programs. Sure, I head up a program called AWS Educate. AWS Educate is Amazon's global initiative to provide students and teachers around the world with the resources that they need really to propel students into this awesome field of cloud computing. Um, we launched it back in uh, May of 2015 and we did it to fill this demand. Um, if we look at it today, we're kind of right in the midst of this fourth industrial revolution. It's changing the means of production, obviously in the digital and cloud space, but it's also creating this new worker class all around you know, the cloud, advanced services like machine learning, AI, robotics, IoT, and so on. And if you looked at the employer demand, um, cloud computing has been the number one LinkedIn skill for the past four years in a row. When we look at cloud computing, we kind of divide into four families. Software development, cloud architecture, the data world, you know, like machine learning, AI, um, data science, business intelligence and analytics, and then the middle school opportunities yeah. like, um, technical customer support agent, cybersecurity, which can range all the way from middle school to PhD. Um, but yet, the time to hire these people has grown up dramatically. Glassdoor ran a study of companies over their platform between 2009 and 2015 and showed that the time to hire had increased by 80%. Yet, just think about that. We talk about, I mean, this conference, it's all about innovation. If you don't have builders, if you don't have innovators, how the heck can you, yeah. can you innovate? Ken, I got to ask you, Andy Jassy, I've known him for over eight years and reporting on him and covering Amazon when, when everyone didn't understand yet what it was, now everyone kind of does. I'll, congratulations and the success. But to see him on stage talk passionately about education, yeah. mean, and knowing Andy, means it's kind of boiled up. Because he's very reserved, he's a very conservative guy, uh, pragmatic, but for him to be overtly uh, projecting his opinion around education, which was really you know, pretty critical, means something's going on. This is a huge issue, not just right. in politics, real state, local areas where education where- Well it's the root of income inequality, it's, it's a lot of- There's a lot of challenges, people just aren't ready for these new types of jobs that are coming out that pay well by the way, and there's a zillion of them out right. there that are unfilled. For the first time there are more jobs unfilled than there are candidates for them. You're solving this problem. Tell us what's going on on Amazon, why the fewer, what's going on with all this, why is everyone so jacked up on yeah, this? Yeah, no, great point. Andy, I think we said that education is at a crisis point today and really talked about that racial inequality piece. Um, we need, the time to hire people in the software development space, cloud architecture, um, technical cloud support agent, it's incredibly long. Um, so that it, it's just creating excess costs into the system. But we're so passionate, like if you look at going to the cloud, Amazon wants to disrupt yeah. areas where we do not see that progress happening. Education is an area that's in vast need for disruption. There are people who are doing amazing stuff. We've heard from Cal Poly, we've heard from you know, Arizona State, um, Carnegie Mellon, there's uh, Joseph Aoun at North, uh, Northeastern. People are doing great stuff. We're looking at, you know, there's some places that are doing dual enrollment programs between high school and community and college and higher ed but we're not moving fast enough. But you guys are providing with Educate, your program, this is, people can walk in the front door without any kind of going through gatekeepers or any kind of getting college. This is straight up from the front door. It could be dropouts, it could be post-college reskilling, whatever it is, they can walk in the front door and get skilled up through Educate, is that correct? Yeah, we send people to awseducate.com. All you need is you know, some element of being in school. Activity or yeah, some yeah. You can <laughs> be going back from a reskilling uh, perspective, and you gain free access into resources. Whether you're a student, a teacher, you get free access into uh, 
content that's mapped to jobs because again, where do people want from you know, education? Yeah, yeah we, we all want enlightenment, contributors to society, all important, but really they want careers. And all the stats, Gallup ran some good stats about both what it, yeah, students and what industry wants. They want them to be aligned to jobs and we're seeing that as a yeah, match. I'm, I'm asking for specifically, if I'm unemployed and I want to work, uh, what can I, do I walk you into can, you, walk you can in the come front right door? on and we can you sign up, we'll give you access to these online cloud career pathways, we'll give you micro-credentials so we can badge you, credential you against, you, know, you we launched something on Sumerian, RoboMaker, so individual services and full pathways. So this is a direct door for someone unemployed looking to get some work and a high paying job. Right. Right, absolutely. We, and we also give you free access into AWS because we know that hands-on practice doing real-world applications is just vital. Um, so we will do that, and by the way, at the end of this, we have a job board, Amazon Customer and Partner yeah, Jobs, yeah. where we're all saying these are jobs that are super high in demand, you can apply to get a job you know, as an intern or as a full-timer you know, through our job This board. is what people don't know about, Rebecca. The word's not out there. I mean, right. this is, I mean, people talk about the problems. Yeah. This is a solution. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but I actually want to get drilled down a little bit. Th this initiative is not just for grown-ups, it's, it's for kids, I mean, this is yeah. for, it starts in kindergarten. So I'm really interested to hear what you're doing and how you're thinking about really starting with the little kids and particularly underrepresented minorities and women who are not, they're, we're also underrepresented in the, in the cloud industry. How you're thinking expansively about getting more of those people into these yeah, jobs and careers. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still day one within all, you know, all always the work. Day always day one at Amazon, we know Amazon. that. <laughs> so we started, with, um, we started with 18 and older um, because we saw that as the key, th the key lever into that audience and start with computer science. But we've expanded greatly our, we last year at reInvent, we introduced pathways for students 14 and over and cloud literacy materials such as a cloud inventor, cloud explorer, and cloud builder bed to really get at those young audiences. We've introduced dual enrollment stuff that happens between high school, community college, or high school and higher ed. And we're working on partnerships with Scratch, First Robotics, Project Lead the Way, that to introduce whether it's block-based coding, robotics, we're finding robotics is such a huge door opener. Again, not just for really technically kids inclined. get into it. Absolutely, because it's hands-on stuff. It's relevant, they want relevant stuff that they can touch, that they can feel, that they can open their browser, make something happen, build a mobile application. Um, but they also you know, want to have pathways into a future. They want to see something that they can eventually you know, wind up in. And AWS, the cloud, just makes it real because you can do real world stuff from a browser by working with the first robotics or using Scratch to develop you know, AI extensions in you know, recognition and Lex and Poly and so on. So we've entered into partnerships with them, right, to open up those doors and create that long-term engagement and pipeline into the high demand jobs of tomorrow. What do you, what, in terms of the colleges that you mentioned, and you mentioned Northeastern and Cal Poly, Arizona State, what, what are you seeing as the most exciting innovations there? Yeah, so first of all, we happen to be, in, we're in over 2,400 institutions around the world. We actually, by the way, began in the U.S. and it was 65% U.S. Now it's actually 35% U.S., 65% outside. We're in 200 countries and territories around the world. Um, but institutions such as those doing amazing stuff, Polo Chow at, at Georgia Tech, this, the things that he's doing with visualization on top of AWS is absolutely amazing. We launched we launched a cloud ambassador program to reward and recognize the top faculty from around the world that are truly doing amazing stuff. But even more, we're seeing the output from students. Um, I, uh, there was a student, Alfredo Colon. He, was, he lived in Puerto Rico, devastated by Hurricane Maria. Um, so 
lost his you know, economic mobility, came to Florida and started taking classes at local schools. Um, he found AWS Educate and just dove headlong into it, did eight pathways, and then applied for a job as a, in DevOps at Universal Studios and received a job. He is one of my favorite evangelists. But it's, and it's not just at higher ed. We found community college students. We launched a dual enrollment with, um, between Santa Monica College and Roosevelt High School in Los Angeles, focusing again on majority minority students, largely Hispanic in that community. Um, and Michael Brown, you know, finished the cloud computing certificate, applied for an internship at Mission Cloud. So again, a partner of ours, and became, yeah, got, his, got his internship, and they started a whole program around. So not only are we seeing you know, excitement out of the institutions, which we are, but we're also seeing excitement out of students and businesses yeah. because they <laughs> all want to get involved in this hiring Brigade. So Ken, I got to ask, we're learning so much about Amazon, we've cover Amazon for a long time, I know all the key buzzwords, you know, raise the bar, <laughs> all these terms, working backwards. So tell us about, what's your working backwards plan? Because you have a great mission, and we applaud, I think it's super critical, I think it's so under uh, promoted, I think we'll, we'll do our best to kind of promote it, it's really valuable to society and getting people their jobs. Yeah. Uh, but it's a great opportunity in and of itself. But what's your goal? What's your, what's your objective? How are you going to get there? What are your priorities? What, what, do, you, what, do, you yeah. do, what do you need so to do? We are a pure educational workforce entity. Our job is to work backwards from employers um, yeah, and this cloud opportunity. The thing that we care about, our customer still remains our student. Um, and so we want to give excessive mobility to students into these fields in cloud computing, not just today and tomorrow. That requires a lot. That requires machine learning algorithms that, you know, m that change the learning objectives you know, based on careers. So content maps to these careers, and we're going to be working with educational institutions on that. Recruiting, does recruiting does it do an effective job at matching students into jobs? Or are we looking at all of just the elite institutions as signals for that? Um, that's a big so problem. So students are your customer, end customer, but students you've got stakeholders in support systems that so that support you, right? Like Cal Poly and others. Absolutely. I mean, We've also got governments. So we were down in Louisiana just last month and Governor Bell Edwards said we're going to go statewide with AWS Educate's cloud degree program across all of their community college system, across the University of Louisiana state system and into K-12 because we believe in those long-term pathways. Never before have governors, have ministers of country working with with the Ministry of Education for Singapore and Indonesia, and we're working deep into India, never have they been more aligned to workforce development. It creates huge unrest. We've seen this in Spain and Greece. We see it in the US. Um, but it's also this economic imperative. And Andy is right. Education is at a crisis. Education is not solving the needs of all of their constituents, but also industries to blame. We haven't been deeply partnered with education. That partnership is such a huge part of and what we do. And there's some structural do. things involved in the educational system. It's linear, <laughs> the internet's non-linear. You got progressions yep, are different. Absolutely. This is an opportunity because I think if the, it's just like competition. Hey, if the U.S. Department of Education is not going to get their act together, People aren't going to go to school. I mean, Peter Thiel, another political spectrum, is, was paying people not to go to college. Again, it was a little bit different radical view. Andy over here saying, look at, and so I see, you see the data points starting to boil up. I see some of my younger um, son's friends all saying, questioning. Right. What they can get on YouTube, what's accessible now. They can learn, you can learn about anything digitally now. This is, totally. people are starting to realize that I might not need to be in college or I might not yeah. need to be learning this. I can Absolutely. go direct. And we pay lip service to lifelong education. If you end, if you terminally end education at X year, well, you know, what's, what's ha happening with the rest of your life? We need to be lifelong learners. And yes, we need to have off ramps yeah. and on ramps throughout our education. The other thing is it's not just skills. The skills are important. Um, and we need to have people who are certified in you know, various AWS skills and comp, but we also need to focus on those companies. 
competencies. Education does a good job around critical decision making skills and stuff like um, you know, collaboration. But do they really do a good job at invent and simplify? Do they teach kids to fail? Are we walking kids through social terminal emotional exams? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Are we teaching Teamwork. kids have to think big, to move fast, and have that bias for action? I, I think we've all And have all fun too. Have games. fun doing it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, so fun having you on the show. A great conversation. Thank you. I appreciate you. it. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. You are watching theCUBE. Stay tuned.